Hello, all you imperfect artists out there. Today we're gonna do this lovely beagle painting. And let me get my camera into place here. Excuse my mess. Um, I always have a craft project going on. Okay, so this is my first dog paint kit and um, it was requested by a beagle lover and I had so much fun putting it together so I hope that you have fun painting it with me. Uh, we're going to be working with a lot of different colors and we're going to be playing with colors so if you're afraid to mix colors or blend colors or um, just let it go we're going to relax and we're going to have fun. Alrighty, so to begin, we're going to start with our different blues. We have our light blue, our dark blue, and our white, and we're just going to make the sky. So I'm going to start with my light blue, and I'm just going to kind of go up in the corner here. And I'm going to, every once in a while, dip into my white. I don't want that sky to be a perfect blue. I want it to be all kinds of colors. And you can always just add a little blue in there at times. And you can paint in an X shape. You can just don't mix the colors. You want some obvious brush strokes. Um, when we get down to the bunnies, you can go ahead and paint right over the head. No need to worry. I wouldn't put dark blue down there because it might cover up the lines. We're just gonna go with a nice, easy, relaxed, messy painting of the sky. Alternating colors every now and then, light blue, maybe a little dark blue. And if you don't like how the dark blue looks, you can always add a different color over it and try to mix it in. And it's okay if you go down into this um, grass line a little bit. I'm just gonna paint over that. And some people, if you follow any other um, classes or if you get any other paint kits, they tell you to go in an X. Um, I just kind of go whatever way my hands are comfortable. And I try not to think about it too much. I just want some messy brush strokes. Again, I'm gonna go right over the rabbit. Um, try not to get too dark of a color over there because it will cover up your lines and you won't be able to see them later. So when you think you've got it all on there, just the way you want it, You can go ahead and rinse your brush. And we're gonna start working with our greens. Now we have three different color greens. Um, we have an olive green and a lime green and either a marsh green or an English ivy green. It kind of depends on what I can get to put in the kits, but it's a darker green. We're not gonna work with the dark green yet. So let's do, so I'm gonna put these two colors on my plate. I to really make sure that my brush is rinsed out. And I'm gonna start with the darker of the colors. And I don't, we're gonna kinda just do our line right here, but I don't know with this color, let's see. Yeah, I guess the, the rabbit does show through. So if you wanna lightly paint over that rabbit, 
I was going to originally have you kind of outline it, but I think it'll be okay. So just make sure not to go too dark around the um, where the rabbit's body is. And I wouldn't add a lot of um, the lime color because I think the lime color over this rabbit would definitely cover it up. We're not going to go over the dog face like this. Okay, so now that I've got that part done, and I've brought some of the blue in there, and that's okay, I'm going to periodically add some of that lime green in there, just like I did with the white and the blue and the dark blue. You do want to try to go all the way up against the beagle head. You don't want to paint into the beagle head. But you definitely want to get right up to that line because you don't want any uh, white spots like a halo around your dog's head and face. You really want it to blend in. alternating from the dark and the lime color and my brush strokes I'm just doing what I think is natural you can do the X you can do brush strokes up but you definitely want some obvious brush strokes to give it the appearance of the grass Now you can switch brushes to your little tiny round brush if you wanted to, to kind of get, you know, this little area right here. It's up to you. Not going to worry about blending too much in between there. So this is actually a really fun project for me. I'm an avid dog lover. Um, I do have poodles. I have eight standard poodles. I have been a dog groomer for 25 years. I have been part of different um, clubs, AKC clubs. My dogs have done tracking, agility, rally, uh, barn hunt, 4-H, they've kind of done everything. Um, so this is a fun painting and um, poodles are hard to paint, especially black ones. So when somebody had asked if I could do a beagle painting, I was like, yeah, that sounds like fun. And I used to have beagles as a kid. So um, this is kind of a nice painting for me. So as far as the side of this goes, um, you can go ahead and if you wanted to paint that green and blue to match the sides, you could. I always paint the sides of mine afterwards black and it kind of gives it a nice frame, but that's a preference. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that in my water and I'm gonna take out my browns. So you have, the dog face has so many colors because fur isn't just one color. So this is going to be a wacky journey for you if you've never worked with multiple colors, but um, uh, trust the process. So we have 
our burnt umber, which is just a brown. We have our um, raw sienna, which is like an orangey brown. We have our raw, let's see, that was burnt sienna. This is raw sienna, which is like a yellow. And these are gonna be the colors that we use on the brown parts of the dog. and obviously black. So. Okay, so actually, you know what? Let's just dry. When I do my um, practice paintings, I practice on uh, a sketch pad. So the paint dries so much nicer. Um, so much faster. So this is the first time that I'm doing this painting on a canvas. And you know what? I think we're going to work on the rabbits first because we're going to come back to those after and I really want to make sure that they're dry in case we need to add a second coat. So for our rabbits, let's start with this one over here and you have a nice tan color. So let's get that tan color out. And I'm going to try and do it from the angle that I'm at. And you're just going to kind of paint this in. Now I like to go from the outside, like I trace the lines, and then I kind of color in. And if you didn't want a tan bunny over here, you didn't, you don't have to do that. That's just, when I was doing a practice test on this, I did white rabbits and I, like I, it didn't even look like this. Um, and I thought, you know, there's not too many white rabbits in the wild. And this rabbit kind of blends in. Now what I am going to do is I'm going to dip into my brown and I'm just going to kind of mix these colors in a little bit. Um, just kind of swirl them around a little bit, you know. There's no rhyme or reason. I just want to have a little bit of variation in color. And you can go back to the tan. And you can go back to the brown, kind of like how we did with the grass and the um, sky. And if you didn't want to do this at all, you don't have to. I just like make it a little crazy looking. And just play with the colors until you are happy with where you're at. Okay, and it looks silly right now, but we are going to outline it in black and we're going to add a little nose and some eyes. So um, just trust the process on this one. And we're going to cover that up with grass and okay, so for the other bunny, I'm going to kind of take a little bit of my white and I'll bring it right to the center of my palette. And then I'm just gonna take a tiny little bit of black, not a lot, and I'm just gonna make a nice gray. You know, you can make the shade that you want. If you just wanted it swirly, you could leave it swirly. That's okay too, because we're gonna play with the fur color on the gray rabbit too. And we're gonna kind of just do the same. We're gonna outline and then color in.
Okay, and I'm going to add a little bit of white into this. I'm just going to kind of play around with the color a little bit. So when I was younger and we had beagles, I loved them. We had two, Sadie and Katie, and they were silly little dogs. But when I got into the dog world as a groomer and going to dog shows, I learned very quickly that there was a difference between the old hunting beagles that I had at home growing up with and the AKC show beagles. Um, it seems like the AKC show beagles are a little tinier. I'm sure you could still hunt with them. I'm not really well versed with hounds. Um, either are super cute. Beagles are a great dog. Probably one of my, my favorites on the list of favorites. Okay, so we're going to go back to our flat brush. We're going to let those little bunnies dry before we start adding any detail to them. And we're going to start with our ears. We're going to go our flat brush, our dark brown or um, burnt umber, and we're just going to outline the ears with the dark brown. We want to set that pattern down of where we're going to be coloring in. Okay, so now I'm not going to rinse my brush. I'm going to go into the burnt sienna, which is this orangey color. And I'm just going to kind of color all that in. We are going to play with colors and shading. So this probably looks really silly to you. But it does come together, I promise. And I'm okay if I'm bringing in the brown from the outside of the ears into this. Like I said, we're going to be playing with lots of color and shading. Okay, so I'm going to let that dry just a little bit. I'm not going to rinse my brush and I'm going to do the same on to the other side. And it's okay if you mess up a little bit. I don't want you to worry. This is a fun painting. You can always just let the paint dry and go over it again. Okay. Okay. And I'm going to go back into my burnt sienna, that orangey brown, and I'm just going to paint that in. I'm not going to care. I want my brush strokes to go up and down at this point. I know we didn't when we did the outline, but for now I want the brush strokes to go up and down, which would be the pattern of the fur. Okay, so now we're going to start playing with some color. I'm going to go back over to this ear. I'm going to go back into our brown color, our dark brown. And I want to add, I want to kind of a little bit of the shading right along the center here. Okay, so I want to try and 
eyeball this part as a dark spot, okay? So, and keep in mind that the more paint you add, um, the more the white and the back of the canvas is going to shine through. So, periodically, you'll probably have to let that dry a little bit. And then I'm going into this raw sienna, which is this, like, I don't know, it's almost an, a yellow. And I'm going to bring that into the color. Just lightly. I'm going to go out around the side that I just painted. Because, I, like I said, I wanted that to be kind of... Uh, a shadow. Okay. I'm gonna do the same for the other side. We're going to let that dry a little bit and we're gonna put in our little shadow in the middle of the ear. Play with how you want it to be shaped. And then we're going to go into our yellowy color and we're just going to kind of go around. And this, the, the shading on the ears and the face for the brown, um, we're going to keep going over and over and over it again until you get a color that you're happy with. But we got to let this dry just a little bit. And so now you can kind of see that it's starting to come together. So I'm going to rinse my brush off just a little bit. And I'm going to work on the face while the ears are drying a little. And we're going to go with our burnt sienna, which is this orangey color. And you could use your flat brush for this, or you can use your um, round liner brush. Because there are a lot of pieces that we have to be kind of careful outlining. So go with whatever brush you are comfortable with. So I outline everything first. I'm going to do the same for the other side. And I know it looks really silly right now, but we're getting there. This is just part of the process. Um, like I said, fur has many different layers. And I guess if you just wanted to do the one layer, you could. It's your creation. It's whatever your, your eye likes. You have to look at the picture every day, not me. So... If this was a process that frustrated you, then by all means, go with how you like it. If you wanted to paint a purple and pink dog on, that's your painting. Okay, so let's play a little more. I'm going to rinse it off. I'm going to go back to this ear over here 
and I'm going to just play around with the colors. And I'm not going to be afraid to add a little black or add a little um, whatever. So let's um, play with the colors. So I'm going to add some of this and I might add just a dab, just a dab of the black. Get that brown nice and dark. Now maybe add a little bit of that color over here. Do the same over here. Get that shading in here, add a dab of black. I'm not pressing down on the canvas. I'm just doing um, very light strokes, getting a feel for what I want, where I want the lighter colors to go. I think I'm going to go over to the face a little bit. Let's see. Let's see what happens if I add some eyebrows right there. Can I blend that in? Can I go up from there? I don't know. Let's see. We'll see how it looks. I'm going to come back to that um, raw sienna. I think I want to add a little bit of light right around here. Play with that. Highlights. And, you know, you don't have to get too, um, uh, you know, hooked up on around the eyes. We are going to outline those and we're going to add some paint over it and it'll all come together. So, you know, I've kind of painted in the lines and you can obviously see that. So. And there is no rhyme or reason to how I'm doing this. I'm just playing with the color. And it glides on nicely on the canvas and it blends in nicely. And I love how when you add that um, uh, raw sienna that orangey that yellowy color it just kind of starts to bring it together you might add a little brown paint off to the side see what that does over here And so you can kind of see it coming. It's coming together. Let's go back over to this ear, see what I can do over here. And now the paint is starting to dry. So now we can really start adding some definition. I'm gonna add little bits of that burnt sienna, that orangey color. Just little bits of it here and there and see what it gets me. And try and blend the colors. Let's see what happens if I add some of that raw sienna. Oh, that's nice. 
do like that. Keeping my brush strokes up and down the best I can at this point. Gonna add a little more of that brown right here. See if I can get the And just play with the colors. Don't stress about it. I want you to relax and enjoy this painting. So that's what it's all about. And so for me, I think I'm happy with that. I'm going to play around with the other side. I'm going to add some of this color, this little burnt sienna orange different places. I'm going around the part that I want shaded. I'm going to add a little bit of that raw sienna, that yellowy color, just because I like it. go back to that dark color right here in the middle. Try and make that a little more softer. And I'm losing the line of my ear on this face, so why don't I see if I can kind of add that a little bit. We're going to go over that with black, so it's not too bad. Okay, so, so far I'm really happy with that. I'm going to play around with the shading of the face a little bit. Starting with my dark brown. None of our paintings are going to look alike. All of us are going to add different shading in different spots where we think they need to be. So your painting isn't going to look like mine, and that's okay. Add a little bit of that raw sienna. Raw sienna is kind of one of those colors that, you know, you never know if it's going to work until you try it. And when you try it, oftentimes it does work. It's not a color that I would ever pick out. All right, so now I have this kind of a messy dog that looks a little weird, but um, once we start adding the details, we'll pull it all together. So let's go ahead and rinse our brush really, really good. And we're gonna go down to this chest area down here. And I'm gonna pull into this gray, if you have a nice, still kind of like a wet gray puddle from when we did our rabbit. Let's add a little more black to that, just a little bit, and it doesn't have to be mixed perfectly. And we're just going to kind of do right down here, let's see, just kind of let's outline this little area right here, the shoulders, I guess you would say. I'm just kind of sporadically putting that in there. We're also going to play with color down here. so. These are the little black patches. Now your beagle might not have a lot of black or it might have a little bit of black. You can adjust these to your markings on your dog if you want to. So I'm going to rinse my brush. And I'm going 
going to add a little bit of white. I'm just going to streak some white in there on both sides. And I'm going to play with this also. This is going to be, a, I'm not blending it. I'm just adding some little quick bursts of color. And now I'm going to wipe my brush off with my paper towel. And I'm just going to kind of add little bits of brown into that. Let's go around the nose. Just hints of it. You know, you don't want to see too much brown. At least I don't. You know, I don't know what colors you want on your dog. But I'm just kind of playing with it. And then maybe you want a little bit more black, so add some black into that. And that's how I'm going to leave that. I'm going to rinse my brush off. And now we're going to do this blaze right here. Okay. So to do that, I am going to do a light gray. Okay. We're going to mix with these colors. We're going to play with the brush strokes on this one too. So I have this like puddle in the middle. I'm going to take a significant amount of white and I really want to mix a light, light gray. So that already is too dark. So I'm going to grab into my white a little bit more. I'm really going to mix that up good. And we can just start with that. Let's see. So I am just kind of not really filling it in a lot, just kind of patting it in there because we're going to go back over with the white. I'm going to lightly go around the nose. Not doing the mouth yet. Okay, I'm going to rinse my brush off real good. And we're going to go over this with some white. All right. So we're just laying the foundation for that. And the white will mix in with this more. So um, you can kind of see how the white will take place. Now, I do like to kind of go into the brown a little bit. So I just kind of do little wispies. Not a lot. I'm just very lightly getting some wispies. And every once in a while, I have to get a new paper towel. Hold on. Every once in a while, I'll just kind of wipe my brush on off to off on this. And I'll dip right back into the white because it kind of eventually starts to take the form of the gray. So um, I'll wipe that off here. Dip back into the white. Do the wispies. You know, and you can kind of angle them down to how the face would be. So I started angling these wispies down this way. And that's how I did that side. And we're going to go over to the other side and kind of do the same. And then we're going to do some messy brush strokes in the middle. Now I'm taking in a little bit of the brown from the wet paint, and that's okay. I'm just going to wipe my brush off. I'm not going to wet it. I want a dry brush for this process. So it's just little side strokes. Number one, side strokes. They don't have to be perfect. You don't even have to do this part if you don't want to. And then I'm going to angle them down as we go down to the nose area. Okay. 
Now I'm just going to kind of do some messy brush strokes. It doesn't have to be anything special. And if you, if the white and the gray are mixing in too much, dry your brush off, add some more white because this isn't gray. This is white. Go around that nose and that mouth. So when I do your paint kits, I will probably have the nose um, in a good marker and down here because that can get kind of lost. So while we're working with our white, let's just kind of do this chin down here. And you should, you probably will have some black on there left over. And I am going to do some wispies into the chest area, into the shoulder blade, just a few. And I'm okay with it grabbing some of those colors. I really like the way that it looks. I'm just going to wipe my brush off, dip back into my white paint, and continue on. I'm going to do the same for the side. Get those wispies in there. And it's bringing in some of the paint and I'm gonna be okay with it because I like the look. And it was pretty white, so I'm gonna add a spot of gray in there and just play with that color. So while this part is drying, I am going to go into my black and I'm just going to kind of do the outline of the eyes. So let's see where we're at here. I lost my eyes, but that's okay. We're going to just do a nice outline. Okay. If you find that your brush has a lot of paint on it and you really want to point, just roll it to get it to a nice point. Um, sometimes if you have too big of a glob of paint, it messes things up. But if that happens, just let it dry and paint over it. Paint is pretty forgiving as long as you let it dry. So this eye is gonna give me a problem. There we go. And while I've got the black on my brush, I'm just going to kind of outline this area right here. And color that in real quick, okay? Okay, I'm going to throw this down here. Just so I know, because I still got to paint in that little chin. I kind of lost it a little bit, so that's going to help me to keep track of that. And I'm going to go into my brown paint and I'm going to just kind of get this little, little eye going. And this will probably need another coat, so that's why we're doing this now. Okay. 
Okay. Rinse that off. And I think I'm going to go and I'm going to try to get this chin done. Now I really want to add some more white to this, so I'm not overly happy with the gray. So. I'm going to smooth out that look a little bit. And I kind of like how that's coming together. I'm pretty happy with that. So we're going to work on our nose now. I'm going to mix some more paints together. And we don't want this nose to be um, dark black. We want to kind of lighten the black a little bit. So I'm going to take a glob of this and I'm just going to kind of lighten it up a little bit with this gray. We don't want it to be gray. We don't really want it to be, we just kind of want, I don't know, I don't know how to explain the color, like a, a really dark, dark gray, but a light black, if that makes any sense. If I were to see this color on my poodle, I would call it a blue. All dog breeds have um, ways to explain the colors. We've got chocolate labs, but a, a brown poodle is not called a chocolate poodle. It is a brown poodle. So we're just going to kind of fill in our nose. If you feel that's too dark, you can always lighten it up. Okay. So now I'm going to go back into the actual black and fill in the nostrils. I'm going to kind of outline the nose with the actual black too. So. I'm going to kind of just go around that. Well, the paint's still wet, so we'll come back to that. All right. So, I 
this point, let's see, because there's a lot of wet paint down here still and I need to let it dry. So I'm going to work on the rabbits and I may have to turn my canvas a little bit. I'm hoping that I won't, but um, this rabbit's at a weird angle. Now we're going to do outlines. We're going to outline in black. And I don't, if you have a hand that's really shaky or you're really nervous about it, I don't want you to fret because um, we're not going to do perfect lines. Um, and when they're not perfect, it adds more of a whimsical look and the out outcome is, is quite nice. So all you want to do is very, very lightly, and you don't even have to do full strokes. So I'm going to kind of, I do a line and then I lift up and then I just kind of, you know, they're not perfect. They're connecting, but they're not connecting. You know, they're not, they're not neat. They're just, they're just there. So don't, don't concentrate too hard about having perfect lines to outline these. Um, sometimes the shakier and more broken actually leads to a whimsy, a more whimsical look. So I'm just very lightly, I do a little bit and then I lift up and then I kind of figure out where I want it to go. Um, now I do need to add a little bit of a nose. So I'm just going to kind of put a little dot right there and a little dot for the eye. And I'm going to do the same for this one. Um, again, this is at a weird angle. So let's see. So I have a big glob of paint on that so I kind of messed up on the ear but you know what I'm gonna let it go I'm not gonna worry about it I'm just outlining a little bit lifting up and this one's kind of nice because if you mess up doing any outlines down here it's gonna be covered up with grass anyway so if you didn't even want to go down this area, you wouldn't, you don't have to. And I'm going to do a little eye, a little nose. And so we should have some very light pink. I don't have that on my palette yet, so. And we're just going to color some pink into the ears. Um, we're only going to do one ear on each of the rabbits because that would be the side that would be facing us. We're not going to see the pink side on that ear. And you're just going to kind of just one little line there. And that's pretty simple. And one there. And that's that part of the rabbit. And if you wanted to go in and fill the eye in a little bit more with brown, you could. If, you're, if your eye is dry. Um, we have to still add the pupil to this. So. And from here, let me see, that's still drying. So let's do the outline of the outside of the dog and the ears while this part is drying and we'll start working it all in and tying all of it together. I'm sure you can start to see the picture coming together now, which is super fun. This is the best part of it, I think. So we're gonna do the outline of the ears and the head and it's going to be the same. If you're like, oh, I have too shaky of a hand, please don't worry about it. 
Um, like I said, it adds to a whimsical look. I'm just going to kind of do one line, lift my hand up. And it's very light strokes. So I'm not bearing down with the brush at all. And I'm really not thinking about it. I'm just quickly adding them. And we're gonna go all the way this way. I'm gonna find where that ear is. And we're going to go along the body. Let's see if I can get this ear done. Okay, get the top of this ear and the top of this head up here. Okay. So I think this might be dry, so let's get our lips formed. We're gonna just kind of Our face is starting to come together. Alrighty. Now I am going to rinse this off a little bit. And I want to fill in the whites of my peak, my eyes. Cover up that brown. And I think what I want to do is, um, if you wanted your dog's eyes to be looking more towards that rabbit, you could. If you wanted them to be looking up at both rabbits, I would leave it like that. But I don't know, I think see if I can add a little bit more white to the side of this eye because I kind of want to looking at the rabbit that's poking up. So I'm probably going to fix my eye a little bit, but it's completely up to you and what you want. And we can perfect that um, with the pupil too. So I will add a little pupil. I'm going to position this eye so he's looking up at that rabbit. And we all know that this beagle is well aware that there's two rabbits. This one looks like it's going to move, so he's going to keep his eye on this one. It's all about the chase, right? I'm 
Okay, and because I didn't outline this very well, Getting a lot of brown in there. All right, I'm gonna try outlining this nose a little better. The white was mixing in with it and it's driving me crazy. So you don't have to do this if you don't want to. So we still have some of this um, gray and you can use your little liner brush or you can use your flat brush. I find it pretty easy to use the flat brush, but it's completely up to you. And I'm just gonna wanna kind of add where the stop is, um, where the nose meets the forehead. I just kind of wanna add a, a couple little you know, if you wanted to make that a little darker, I think I'm going to make that a little darker. Not too much. Just back and forth. Just one, two, three. And it just kind of gives the, you know, appearance of, okay, the nose stops. That's where the forehead is. And you can play with that for sure. You know, if you said, I don't like how it goes, you could definitely play with that. And then if you wanted to add some shading, depending on where your nose is, um, you could. Uh, in my first picture, there was a, the nose wasn't as big. And so there was a little bit more of a gap. Let me show you. So this was my practice picture. And so I just kind of did the same for that nose, but for this one, it didn't come out that way. So I'm just going to leave it. And then I'm going to add a little bit of a, a couple little strokes there. And now we're gonna do we're gonna do our little lines, our movement lines. So I think what I'm gonna do is I want a couple of little. This dog's eye is twitching. He really wants that rabbit. Okay, and his ears are twitching. You know he's got, he's ready, man. And we'll add a little movement line up here. And it just kind of gives the illusion that, you know, he's got his ears are moving. He's shaking. He wants to go. Um, and this rabbit, we're going to do some movement lines. Because he's moving. He's, he's twitching his little nose. He's, he smells that dog. He knows. We're just going to do one on this one because he's just twitching his ear. He's listening. And we're going to dip into our white and we're going to add two little dots into the eyes like snowmen, one on top of the other. Going to add a little highlight across the nose. We're going to start filling in the grass. This is where we start to go into our dark green. So we've got our darker green. And you're just going to kind of, um, if you want to practice off to the side, you could just do, you know, a couple of tufts of darker green. We're going to, we're going to cover up these rabbits a little bit. You know, because very rarely do I see a rabbit out in the open, especially when they know that there's a predator around. I'm 
And I'm going to add some, you know, we want to add some of that grass at the top of this hill. And if you wanted to add a, a little hint of black every once in a while into it, you could feel free to do that. That one went up a little too far, so I'm just going to play with that a little bit. And we're really going to cover this one up. Add our blades of grass up top and if you wanted to add some of the lighter green into it you could it's completely up to you Even add some of the lighter color if you wanted to. Play with the colors a little bit. Don't be afraid. You can even add a little black if you wanted to, you know. My daughter's alarm is going off. She doesn't like to shut those off. So you might be listening to that. Oh, she shut it off. Must be listening to me. I'm going to add a little black over here. Maybe one over here. Okay, and I'm going to do little sporadic um, blades of grass, just in different areas, doesn't really matter where, you know. Just see what looks good to you. You know, if you don't like the way something looks, you know, play with the colors a little bit. Okay, so for now, let's see. We're going to add some little pops of color. We're going to add some flowers to it. We got our red and our yellow. I'm gonna kind of rinse off my brush here. And I'm gonna start with our red, and I'm just gonna add um, just some little dots. And I'm going to do three in a row. And I'm going to kind of add them, you know, where I think is going to be cute little pops of color. 
and we can add some over here. Wherever you think. And then I'm going to dip into my yellow. I'm just going to add a little swirl of yellow in there. And because I didn't rinse it off, it's kind of given a whole look of a pretty little swirly flower. Um, and I think you know, I might want one over here off to the side. Oops. Nothing big. And that's it. You are done with your beagle painting. Now, if you wanted to add, um, you know, some birds in the background, you could, or if you wanted to add um, a butterfly, if you were really skilled at that, you could. But um, for me, I think I'm okay with this. Um, like I said, if you, there was something you didn't like, uh, you know, if the nose didn't look right to you, let it dry and just fix it. And it will be great. So, um, thank you so much. Oh, let me just show you how I did the sides with the black. Okay. So when I'm painting, I just take my black and I just kind of go like this. Now you do have to be careful because sometimes it goes into the painting. I actually like the, that effect, but that's completely up to you. So I'll show you. Let me just get the side done and I'll show you what I mean. Oh, looks like I got a little yellow into that or orange. So you can kind of see it kind of comes through on the side and I, I'm okay with it, but some people don't like that look. Um, I just, I just kind of like it. I think it ties it all together, but whatever, whatever you want. So, um, thank you so much for joining me for this painting and I hope you have a great day and give your dogs a little pat on the head for me. Bye.